Hello my lovely nerds and welcome back for another episode. We're going to be doing part two in our world building with medicine. This time we're going to be looking at the disgusting, the gleefully horrific fantasy diseases. I hope you enjoy. So before we begin, I'm going to explain what I've got going on here. Normally I don't bother to explain them because I think they're pretty self-explanatory, but this one really isn't. So I thought it was an amoeba when I bought it. In a small little town in Slovakia, where it's hand crocheted by nuns, and I didn't think to question why they would be making amoeba instead of realising that it was in fact, it did have a beak and it had feathers and is actually a rooster, which turns out to be a very important symbol in their town. But nonetheless, it works, I think, for this video because we're going to be talking about diseases. It can be there to represent chicken pox. Scorchy's also backed because Scorchy is also relevant in this episode. And I guess you'll see why in a little bit. Now, I love the subject of diseases. I'm obviously not much of a fan when it comes to the practical experience when you have them, but I've had lots of opportunities over the years to do research in various labs, working on various different diseases, things like Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, Prion's disease, microcephalies and cancers. So. I really do have quite a bit of a range of experience in this subject matter and I think that's why this is one of my most looked forward to topics to be talking about in a video with you guys because there's so much that we can do when it comes to incorporating diseases into our magical settings. Let's face it, diseases are fascinating, they are horrific, they create this morbid curiosity in us of fear that that's going to happen to us. It's like a slow moving car crash that we can't take our eyes away from. We are just grossly curious about the disgusting. And this is something that you can play off of when it comes to your world building. You can use the diseases to flavor the worlds that you've created and make them seem very different from other worlds that other people have lived in. And the vast amount of knowledge that we've accumulated about real world diseases are basically just reams of knowledge that you can go to and apply to your own stories. And there are some absolutely fantastic examples of authors who have used fantasy diseases in their own stories to add these interesting textures to the worlds they've created. Think Firepox in Lee Bardugo's Six of Crows, or Spattergroit and Dragonpox in J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series. There's Grayscale from George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice of Fire. And then there is my personal favourite, which is Disease Maker's Croup. It's one of Neil Gaiman's creations. He used it in his story, Fragile Things. And it's basically where people who catalogue or create these diseases end up just talking nonsensically and repeating things out of context and just basically losing their marbles. And I thought that was a really poetic irony that he gave to those characters. So diseases are fascinating and they are a wealth of knowledge that you can already pull on in order to expand your worlds. But how are you going to do that? Well, I am very glad you asked. So first up, you could just sprinkle regular commonplace diseases into your stories. I can't remember the last time I read a fantasy book that mentioned cancer or diabetes. It's just not very common to see. You know, I think we tend to go for murders, assassinations, war when it comes to means of death in our stories, not the more mundane things, but you can do that. Think what would have happened to Robert Baratheon if he hadn't had a murder attempt basically on his life. You know, he was very much on the path to diabetes, but he didn't quite make it there. But we definitely can have more characters dying from more commonplace deaths. But I know this is a fantasy video, so if you don't want to do that, then there are other options for you. And the way that you do this is by making your real world diseases more interesting. First off, you could do it by showing that they don't actually exist in the fantasy world that you've created. You know, you could have a magic system that means that diabetes or cancer, arthritis, Alzheimer's disease aren't actually a problem. And that's quite cool because that gives you some interesting concepts to explore in terms of how society would deal with that. And it means that you can basically show that your world is very different from our world in a pretty simple way. And the next way you can do it is by making the disease into a consequence of the magic system in your world. Do you have a magic system that is using carcinogenic substances to cause magic. Well then, people maybe get cancer by using that magic. And if you do this, if you add in these consequences to your magic system, then you're creating extra conflict for your characters and your plot, which means that your story will be that much easier to be engaging and keep people interested in when you eventually get to write it. 
very cool. To do this, you basically need to think about how your magic system works and then expand out. Pick organs or body systems that would be affected by the magic system, look up the side effects of damage to those organs or bodily systems, and then incorporate those as consequences for over or under use of your magic. I did this with Las Memoria, which is where you have a race of people who steal memories. Well, when they steal too many memories, this means that this basically clouds their ability to know what is reality and what is memory. They end up getting lost in their memories, unsure what is real and what isn't. And it's a really cool concept that works well because I'm linking the memories with the brain. But the brain is far from the only organ in the body that you could use. Say you have some sort of ingestion based magic that involves you eating something in order to be able to do the magic. Well, then you could have implications for things like uh, the stomach, the digestive system. Say you had stomach ulcers and those are quite cool concepts that you could have people doing too much of this magic and then getting damaged for it. And so there is a natural limit on how much magic could be used in this world. So you had an energy based magic. Well, maybe when you overuse the energy and you don't actually, you haven't taken enough energy in to be able to do what you're doing, then is it sapped from your body, from the cells in your body, maybe causing them to die off, causing all sorts of diseases that you would probably only get later in life, your neurodegenerative diseases, for example, to start coming on a lot earlier in onset because the person has just been damaging themselves by doing the, too much of this magic. Third way you could play around with fantasy magic systems, but this one you'd have to have a race of non-humans in your story because you'll see why. But this is where if you have uh, an individual who isn't human, then you have extra organs or body parts that could have a new type of disease or many diseases associated with them. For example, does your species have wings? First off, if they do, that's very cool. I love that. Secondly, if they do, then it means that you could think about all sorts of concepts to do with the wings. Say you had aging in your species where arthritis is a big problem for individuals with wings. So that means that the elderly folk of the society end up getting kind of trapped maybe in a nest area that is very sacred among their people and all the younglings have to fly up there to get advice from their elderly who can never descend. Or say, for example, that you have some kind of genetic disorder that only affects a few individuals in your species, but that causes this calcification of the bones in their wings, making their bodies too heavy to actually fly, and meaning that these people are basically landbound. This is a disability in the world that you've created, and it's not one that we have. You could also do one which is a little bit disgusting, which is to do with a deficiency in methionine, which is a really important component in the development of plumage of birds. And actually, when birds don't have this, it means that they go and start eating feathers of other birds because they're desperate to try and take in enough methionine into their body so they can make nice, beautiful feathers with which to fly. But you could have something like that in your world, some kind of dis genetic disorder there. I mean, it's kind of the equivalent of me going around eating people's hair, which is a little disgusting, but you know, each world builder to their own world. What about if your species lives underwater, merfolk, and you have an obesity pandemic among the merfolk, so much so that their gills can't actually open anymore and they can't breathe. Oh, now I'm getting visions of merfolk just slowly drowning underwater. But merfolk obesity does lead me on to my next point, which is that you must be sure to pay off consequences of excess in your world, whether that is through magic, as we have already talked about, or whether it's through the excesses of the society at large. Things like if you have a society with more pollution, then you're going to see more diseases like asthma. And if you don't do this, then it kind of makes a world that doesn't feel quite right. It's almost like if you wrote a historical fiction based in the time of Henry VIII, where there was lots of gluttony and sex everywhere, but you never mentioned anyone dying of diabetes, anyone's toes going gangrenous, or no sexually transmitted infections. It would just feel a little unreal, really. It would feel very safe. I mean, it's a style of writing, but if you're going for a more realistic style of fantasy telling, then you're going to need to include the diseases. You've got to get the gross in with the gorgeous. You could also introduce diseases from the fantasy creatures that you also have inhabiting that society. You know, humans do get diseases when we live in very close contact with animals. Milkmaids used to catch cowpox from cows. You could do that with any fantasy creature that you have in your world. Just pick a fantasy creature, pick a 
type of infection it would cause when its disease does get passed across to humans and off you go. Have a fun time playing around with what disgusting elements you could give them. Which brings me quite nicely onto the communicable side of this fantasy disease tale, which is probably the one that I've seen done most often in fantasy books. This is where we use infectious diseases that can be passed on from one person to another and we basically tweak them slightly and put them back into our fantasy stories. It's a very easy thing to do. Probably the most famous example of this is the use of grayscale in George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire, which I think is probably based on leprosy because there's a lot of similarities in the transmission, in the attitudes towards people who have this disease, and it fits quite nicely with the time of history that he was actually pulling a lot of his world building inspiration from. And you can do this too. You can add one of these diseases tweaked in your own ways into your fantasy setting. Just go and have a gander over the many diseases out there. Pick one of your choice. Look at how it spreads around the population, what kind of symptoms it has, what kind of outcomes there tend to be for the individuals who are infected, what treatments are available and Look at what the attitudes of society at large are towards people who have this disease. Do they shut them away on an island somewhere? Do they shoot them on site? Have a look into all of that. There's a lot of knowledge that we already have that you can draw on as inspiration for creating your own disease. And if you really want Rachel bonus points when it comes to creating more of a culture around this fantasy disease you've created, then come up with some really cool quack theories about how you could treat it. Because obviously not everyone thinks the same way when it comes to treating disease. And this could be really interesting ways of showing how different people in society view this disease. A couple of watch outs, because this wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't give you some helpful tips, I hope, for things that you should be careful of when doing this. First of all, I see this a lot, diseases that kill instantly, that's not really how disease works. You know, it's even an infectious disease, say you had a bacteria or a virus, they take a bit of time, they have a latency period. When it comes to viruses, it's because they need time to get into the body, infect cells, reproduce themselves inside those cells and let those little baby viruses spread to other parts of the body and do the same in all the other cells. And this does take a bit of time. And um, with bacteria, it can take a long while for the amount of toxins released by the bacteria to accumulate in the body enough to actually cause damage to the host. So unless you had a disease that was somehow altered to make it magically different, which maybe you could explain, it's actually quite difficult to do. So I don't recommend you do that because you will just write yourself into a corner that you will have a hard time writing your way back out of. Another watch out is that pathogens don't affect everybody in the same way. This is why we actually see that some people weren't affected by the Black Death. Some people have a natural immunity when it comes to HIV. This is all really cool and it's down to our genetics. We're all slightly different. It's a, just a normal variation in our gene pool that we see across the world. And the reason being that if we were all identical, the instant something came along that you know, we didn't have the immunity to, then we'd all die. And a little bit of genetic variation helps us survive as a species. So this will happen in your fantasy world too. There will be some people who just won't get the disease. So don't be afraid to use that because that just makes it feel a little bit more believable. All right, and that was everything for this week's video. I hope you got as intrigued by fantasy viruses and bacteria and all sorts of diseases as I did. I love talking to you about it all. I may be weird for liking it, but I find it a really fascinating subject. Anyway, like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I hope you come back next time for another video on how to incorporate science into world building. All right, my lovely nerds, have a lovely week. Speak to you soon. Bye.